Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hammered Corner. In today's video we have another coin bundle for you all. But just before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video here on the channel. Today we have a £370 coin bundle that I received this week. I know that these are well liked videos so I will make more bundle videos that I have coming in the future and groups of coins I purchased as a bundle in the past so you can get a clear sense of what coins are going for in 2021. So my first purchase was from Alan over at Essex Coins. For those that have been here on the channel since the start, know that I can't recommend Alan highly enough for his professionalism, speed and quality of coins that he sells. So it's no surprise that I'm showing you yet another coin for you all today from him. So when you buy a coin from a dealer, you may pay a little over what the coin is worth, but you know you're going to get the top service, authentic coins, and if there were any problems, an outstanding work ethic. I purchased my first Henry VI groat from him, and it's my second ever medieval style groat after my Edward III coin that I purchased earlier this year. I know when I began collecting, these coins always looked so similar to me, that I was incredibly impressed when experienced numismatists could tell them apart. But once you see them over and over every day, they become so distinctive that has put this one on my wish list for a very long time. This first coin is a Henry VI groat minted between 1422 and 1430 during Henry's first reign before being deposed. The bust depicts a front-facing king in a medieval style portrait with annulets next to his neck, making this a very common annulet issue coin. The portrait is surrounded by a ten arched treasure and an outer beaded circle with a very interesting with the obverse legend translating to Henry, by the grace of God, King of England and France. Very interestingly too, because he held many territories in France, the last coin you'll see in this bundle is known as an Anglo-Gaelic coin. And interestingly, this Henry VI groat was minted in Calais, a French city on the coast that was under English control at the time, with the inner legend reading Villa Calais, City of Calais. But this is not an Anglo-Gaelic coin. The outer legends translates to, I have made God my helper. And as you can see, between the pellets in the inner circle, you can see two annulets, as this is an annulet issue groat. The reverse designs on medieval groats are of my all time favorite, and the toning and quality of this coin doesn't disappoint. So for those interested, this example cost me 110 pounds inclusive of special delivery. Thank you very much to Alan from Essex Coins for the beautiful coin. Secondly, I have a lovely piece of early milled silver to show you all. I purchased this coin from a Facebook seller called Timothy, a well-known antiques expert that has appeared on many television shows. This is my first ever George I shilling, of which completes my trio of Georges. Look out for a video on these three very soon. Now George I coins are considerably more expensive than George II and George III especially those of high quality. George was the first of the Hanoverian name and reigned after the Queen Anne. At this point in numismatic history, all coins were minted at the Tower Mint in London, so there were no more mint marks, except we now have different letters between shields on the reverse that denotes where the silver came from. And as a little taster to a future video, the SSC was silver from the South Sea Company but we will get more into that in another video. This coin was minted in 1727 with George facing right. And ever since beginning my time collecting early milled shillings has been a coin I have wanted to own for over a year now. This particular example cost me 130 pounds with Timothy allowing me to pay off in two installments, which was the only way I was able to purchase this coin as I was moving house at the time. For those that shy away and turn their noses at early milled, should really purchase one of these early milled shillings, as there is something quite amazing about them. Not because they were milled and weren't as crude as hammered, but because of the weight and the design and the sheer history that binds us with this hobby in the first place. So special thanks to Tim, and I couldn't be happier with my second coin. And finally, my third and final coin of the bundle, and it is the second coin from the reign of Henry VI. Now this coin is an Anglo-Gaelic coin, where coins were minted in territories of France that were under English control. 
This part of numismatic history opens up a whole area of English history and has only been covered on the channel once before, back when I covered a hardy from Edward the Black Prince. This coin is a Grand Blanc between 1622 and 1661, and there isn't a whole lot of research behind these that will help pin down the year more accurately. The obverus displays no bust of the monarch, but has Henricus written across the middle, topped with a cross with a French lily to the left and the rampant lion of England to the right. Above we have the mint mark, which is the leopard, which tells us that this was minted in Rowan. As you can tell by the colour, the French silver was notoriously poorer than the English, and the coinage was incredibly debased too. Instead of being 0 0.997 finesse, it was actually 0 0.227, almost four times less silver in it than it should have. So that is why the coin comes across as very coppery, as that is what the coin is mostly made up of. What a coin this would have been had it been the full royal silver content. But such is life with numismatics, and is what compels us to keep learning every day. This example was purchased from JNM Coins, who sells some of the highest quality coins at exceptionally low prices. I purchased this coin for £130, inclusive of special delivery. So links to all dealers, websites and Facebook groups will be left in the video description. And every coin you have seen today will have its own episode in the very near future. Covering questions like, why weren't Henry VI coins minted in Calais classed as Anglo-Gaelic? And so on. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and thank you all for watching, and as always, keep collecting!